Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. After you're through the news you need to know about, we run you through the fan Q&A where we answer fans' questions. Crazy episode for you today. A lot of things that I did not see coming happened. I think a lot of Dolphins were surprised of the news over the weekend. It's been insane, especially this Monday. Things even got even crazier. And Tuesday and obviously a little bit of Wednesday are the final days of cuts. So I'm sure we're going to be in for another long ride. Um, but first and foremost, this first news story is the tweet you see on the screen. Um, it's the Deshaun Watson stuff. So let's get into this tweet. Let's get into the Deshaun Watson stuff. First of all, this tweet I came across uh, the day before the Deshaun Watson stuff broke uh, and really started to catch fire again with the national media. So I thought that was interesting. The guy that you see on the screen is a jet source of some kind he predicted a lot of the moves the jets made in the offseason he predicted the head coaching hire of robert sala before anybody else did so this guy has some credibility and i thought it was interesting that he re- tweeted this before all the deshaun watson stuff even started so i don't know it might end up being nothing but i felt like it was a little nugget to show you guys hopefully i don't know who knows what's gonna happen um as you can say it was the 28th of august uh, the stuff really started popping off, I think, the 29th. That's when the national media really started to run with the story. So I just thought it was interesting that he kind of got there a day earlier before anybody else. Plus, obviously, what he's reporting would be in the probably the second to, or third. I mean, if it works out, obviously, we and we're not talking about the legal issues. We're just talking about the football side. But let's say he doesn't have any suspensions that are too great or – all the off the field stuff somehow ends in a happy ending for whatever reason for Deshaun Watson where he doesn't have to serve any time or whatever the case may be and the Dolphins have him for the next 15 years I mean that's it let's just put it this way that's not a bad thing he's one of the top five best players at his position it's the most important position on the field and it's not even close so from a football standpoint it makes sense um if you just want Deshaun Watson, the thing that doesn't make any sense, and I don't, I don't want to really cover everything else that everybody else has been talking about, is if you're the Dolphins, and this kind of sucks if you're a fan. This is from a fan's perspective. You just watched this preseason, which was hype. It was awesome. There was a lot of young players that showed out that I really like, and I think are going to have good careers here. And then that, one of the main ones is obviously Tua. Tua had a fantastic camp. He had a fantastic uh, preseason. He looked way better than he did year a year ago. He looks bigger, stronger, faster. His arm looks better. He's more decisive in his de- decisions. The things that we loved about him when it comes to instincts and his pocket awareness w- was on full display. He's more athletic than he was. Like I said, he's just more healthy. He looks a lot better. He looks more comfortable. I think it's the main thing is he just looks more comfortable. And he looks like a really, really good quarterback. And, you know, one of the things that I love about him is he just is born to play that position. Uh, he's very just – he you, you can just tell by watching Tua play football. Like, you were born to play quarterback. So he looks amazing. And it's weird that – the, these rumors continue to swirl around the organization. Um, and I have said in past episodes, in this last pre- previous episodes, I've been on the Deshaun Watson bandwagon this entire time. But after seeing Tua play as well as he has, and look how much better he looks, it, it's just weird that, that, that this is even still being discussed in the organization. Um, and I, even me, myself have completely turned a leaf on the whole Deshaun Watson thing to where I'm even like, I, I think we can trust in Tua. And I, I think he, I think we've seen enough for, for me to be like, okay, he's going to become the player that we thought he could be. Um, and now this happens. It's just weird. I mean, all the confidence that the organization has had in him telling beat writers and national media, how much Tua has gotten better. The, the Twitter and the Instagram and everything that you've seen from Dolphins training camp have, has been highlight after highlight from Tua. He had that one bad practice in OTAs, and then we after that, he's just killed it. He's just had a fantastic offseason, and that was in a monsoon, for God's sakes. I think the next day he threw six touchdowns and zero interceptions. I'm not even exaggerating. And that was like a seven-on-seven. Seven. Both of those practices were seven-on-seven. Seven. So it's just weird to me as a fan, and I think all of us fans – to have this report happen, 
after all of that. And not to mention the fact that it takes away a lot of the thunder the Dolphins had in the offseason. I mean, I was I think we all were riding pretty high with this team, you know, and we still are, but it just kind of takes away from it in a weird way that from everything that Tua accomplished so far, and it sucks. He doesn't I think as fans it sucks. He doesn't deserve that. Um, you know, and it makes me wonder about the whole the owner rumors, and it makes me worried about that too. Uh, maybe this isn't Brian Flores's decision which would suck if they forced him into that it would end up working out but let's just say somehow brian leaves that would be heartbreaking i don't know the whole situation just feels weird um it doesn't feel like this is brian's decision necessarily uh because it wouldn't make sense for him to kind of spearhead this unless he has been since you know months ago and if that's the case it makes sense but if it just jumped back up in the last few days then it definitely doesn't make sense because he's just been worried about getting this team ready for, for week one and that kind of seems like this wouldn't have come from him it would have come from either chris or steven um so that's kind of concerning too i don't know man it just doesn't seem and honestly this could all be fake um but we'll find out tuesday and maybe wednesday morning or afternoon uh whether these news stories are real or not but i will say this and just to give you guys this little nugget is he this dude has predicted things in the past this is not a uh troll situation this guy has actually predicted things whether it's you know it has just been with the jets but uh I just found that very interesting. I thought I would share that story with you guys, with the, or this just the weird coincidence, I guess. But I don't know. I think, um, and and again, if the Dolphins were to make the trade, and you know, obviously the proposed offer is three first round picks uh, and two second round picks. Um, if it is true, and again, ignoring and it's hard to ignore it, but the off the field issues and somehow that gets worked out. The Dolphins are getting a top fight, and they're going to be a Super Bowl contender this year. Um, so it's, I don't know, to be honest with you, just looking at it from a fan football with a critical eye, either way, the the only way the Dolphins could lose is if obviously the out-to-field issues, issues go wrong, and that's a huge gamble, obviously. So there is a way where it could go terribly wrong. But again, if it, if it all works out, Either way, either road the Dolphins take, I feel like it's going to work out, um, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think if they have Tua or Deshaun, I think they're going to have a lot of success for a long time. But it is just weird. I mean, everything that we've, like I just discussed with the preseason, the offseason, the pr- improvement of Tua, and then that, that this just gets thrown back in our face, it's just very odd. And uh, definitely not a fan of it. I'm actually sick and tired of these rumors. Uh, they've been going on for what over four months now. I, I don't want to hear about them anymore. I don't care anymore. Uh, I don't want to read about it anymore. I just want to focus on the team and how much better it's gotten. And I'm very excited about Tua and the team and them going forward, especially Tua, man. After seeing him this offseason, um, it just gives me a, a lot of confidence going into the year that you know he's going to be way better than he was a year ago. He just looks so much better. Um, and, uh, I don't know, just a weird timing on this, a very weird timing. And again, it would make more sense if Tua hasn't been playing well, but he has. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, I just wanted to throw this one in here. Obviously, it's a big deal, but it is just rumors, and I think we're all sick and tired of it. Like, nobody wants to hear about this anymore. Nobody cares anymore. I really don't care. Um, I mean, if he... It just it's just at this point exhausting and we've just heard too much about it. it whatever happens happens at this point I, I'm, I've put way too much brain power into thinking about this and wondering for the last three months about this whole new story and we've covered every single step of the way of it so we had to cover this and um, it's just annoying at this point I'm sick and tired of hearing about it anyway let's move on from this new story uh, let's get into uh, this next news story, which blows my mind. Uh, actually, we'll save that for last. Let's get into this next news story. This doesn't really surprise me. It's actually kind of good news if you're a Dolphins fan. This comes from Pro Football Rumors. Dolphins release center Matt Skura. Matt's stint with the Dolphins has already come to an end. Again, this comes from Pro Football Rumors. The Dolphins are cutting the veteran center, reports NFL.com's Ian Rapp report. 
back in March, Skura inked a one-year deal worth about a million dollars um, with 400000 uh, of that guaranteed. Today, the organization um, moves on without him. So this is an interesting one. You know, Skura had a Pro Bowl like stretch of games there with Baltimore, and then he kind of fell off the planet with injuries, and then his play kind of deteriorated, and then now he's a Dolphin, and now he's not a Dolphin. The thing that makes me actually... I think this is, and I know this is weird, but this is actually positive news because Michael Dieter killed it this offseason and in the preseason, and clearly they have enough confidence in him to go forward with him, um, and I think that's just a good news for Dolphins fans. He really has played pretty dang good at that that center, like pretty dang good. You know, the only negative thing we've heard from him is the one day that we pumped crowd noise in there. I think he like overshot two on a snap. That's it. Other than that, he's been pretty pretty awesome at that position. And people forget, last year, you know, we were able to kind of run the ball a little bit against New England and even against Oakland, um, and he was a big part of that. He came into the lineup and played really well. Uh, he's developed into a, a pretty good player, and uh, I think that's good news for the Dolphins. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. I, I think the development of Michael Dieter obviously was a big factor in this, and uh, looking forward to, to seeing him play center for the Dolphins. I think he's going to do a really good job. This next new story blows my mind, and I don't even know. I don't know what's going on. We, I mean, we, we we had a fantastic game against Cincinnati. We had an awesome preseason, and just things just can, drama continues to follow this team for whatever reason. This next new story comes from Pro Football Members. This one really doesn't make too much sense. The Dolphins have released Bernardrick McKinney, which I was a huge fan of his. I loved the trade. I thought he was going to make a pretty big impact on this team. Really upgrades the front seven he's a great run defender he's a really fantastic blitzer i really don't understand why they did this uh, so let's get into this new story again this comes from pro football Barnabas. bernard Jake mckinney's stint with the Dol- dolphins has already come to an end after getting traded to miami earlier this offseason veteran linebacker the veteran linebacker will be released back in march the dolphins acquired mckinney and a seventh round pick from the texans for a sixth round pick in shaq lawson who ironically was traded by houston earlier today uh, McKinney subsequently reworked his contract. The 2018-year-old was originally set to make $27 million over the next three years, including a $7 million salary in 2021, but he took a major pay cut by ripping up the final two years of the deal while earning $3 million this year, plus $200,000 in, in incentives. And again, this is a former Pro Bowler we're talking about. Now, the thing that's interesting about this and can make a little bit of sense about it, Sam McGuavin killed it in preseason. So maybe they're like, listen, we've seen a lot of development from him. You know, he's played good run defense. He's been a fantastic blitzer. He's played outside linebacker. He's played inside linebacker. Maybe they feel confident moving on without Bernardrick because of the demand of Aguavin. And then you also have Atlanta Roberts coming off the PUP list. You know, and Jerome Baker said something interesting in a conference. Uh, and it, Someone asked him the question, what's the difference between Landon and McKinney? And he just said Landon just knows the defense a lot more. And I thought that was interesting. And Elandon has a similar, Elandon has a very similar game to Bernardrick. He's literally the same player. I think McKinney's, I mean, from at least the past, you know, before the injury, McKinney's a little bit better. Uh, but uh, Elandon plays the same, he does the same thing. He's a, he's a good blitzer. He's a good run defender. He's a thumper. He's not bad in coverage. I think he's actually better than McKinney in coverage by a smidge. But I do think McKinney's a better run defender and a better blitzer. At least from the, again, for whatever they saw in practices, obviously that can't be the truth because, he, again, he took a pay cut. They didn't give a, that many draft, that much draft capital on him, so they didn't have, you know, I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, clearly, again, I think the development of Guavin uh, and then he landed knowing the playbook a little bit more. Plus, this defense really doesn't need that many li- middle linebackers, you know, uh, and maybe that was a big factor into this. Like, they're not going to really run that package that much, especially in today's game and today's NFL. So I don't know. Maybe a lot of that had there's like you know we don't really need two thumpers. We don't need a Landon and McKinney. And maybe the deciding factor was okay. Aguavin is developing into something nice. We have Jalen Phillips. He's not quite ready. You know I think a lot of that stuff had a lot to do with the the, the, the releasing of him. But he had to have played worse than them. That's the thing. He had to have. Uh, and I trust Brian and Chris um, to make those decisions. So uh, there has to be a legitimate reason why they let him go. It just was very surprising. And I actually had a lot of high hopes for him. And again, he is coming off an injury. He hasn't played football in a long time. He does look like, like when we watched him play in preseason a little bit, he did look a little bit bigger than he has been in the past. 
So maybe he's a little bit overweight. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to believe a Brian Flores player, especially who spent an entire offseason, is overweight. I, I honestly doubt that. But whatever the case may be, um, it kind of sucks that he's uh, didn't work out because he's he, he had a lot of potential. He's a talented guy. Uh, but that did, I don't think this really necessarily affects – because of the development of Guavin, I like Elandon's game. Um, and I think they got bigger in the interior of the defensive line too. Uh, and Jerome Baker is a dang good player, and I like him. All. Obviously, he's a fantastic player. So it doesn't hurt the defense that much. It's just it's kind of a head scratcher. Like, what happened? Uh, maybe we'll get an explanation next time the media talks to Brian. But this is definitely one of the more crazy cuts so far uh, in the NFL for sure. Uh, there is a little bit of a nugget here before we move on. Uh, to the Bengals game, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the standouts in that game. Uh, but before we do that, Armando Salguero has a little bit more news on the, the McKinney situation. Armando Salguero observed the veteran struggled in pass coverage, lim- limiting his playing time. Plus, Elena Roberts seemed to jump McKinney on the depth chart after the former, uh, uh, after the player was activated from PEP. So there you go. I think it has a lot to do with that, and especially with what Jerome said that he knows the playbook more. And like I said, I think Elena definitely is a better athlete than Bernardrick, and Bernardrick is definitely an old school linebacker. Um, so maybe that had a lot to do, obviously it did, and, uh, he did, he definitely had his moments in preseason two where he let up a couple of plays, but there were some other moments where he didn't look too bad, I don't know, what, whatever happened, happened, uh, but it definitely, I think, had to do with, obviously, Landon and, uh, uh, Sam's development, or, not development, Elena's, not Elena's development, Sam's development, I think, had something to do with it, too. Anyway, before we get into the fan Q&A, let's break down the last, the final preseason game, which was a crazy game, uh, an awesome way to end the preseason on a uh, pretty much a Hail Mary to uh, Myrick uh, to, in the uh, corner of the end zone. Great, great game by Senate. Had a fantastic game. But So let's get into this game. Uh, there's a couple of observations I made. I think the number one, let's start with the offensive side of the ball. I want to start with Dokes because I think this is important. I thought he looked fantastic. Um... I like his game. I thought he consistently had good vision in this game, which you can't say for Malcolm Brown. And the whole reason the Dolphin that even got Malcolm Brown was to be a power back. And he's better at that than, to me, Malcolm. I think he has a lot more juice. I think his vision is better. He hits the hole a lot quicker. He's a more decisive decision maker when it comes to running the football. I just like Garrett a, a little bit more. I like Dokes a little bit more. Not even a little bit more. I like him a lot more than... Um, uh, Malcolm Brown. So I don't know what they're going to do. Obviously, he scored two touchdowns in the day, and overall, just had a very good f- game. Uh, I'm, exci- I'm excited and interested to see where he lands on the depth chart because I think he definitely earned that third spot. He played better than Malcolm did the entire preseason, preseason, especially this last game. And I know some people, you know, you have, you know, Malcolm had a decent game against the Falcons, and Malcolm not pr- playing in this game, I think, is a huge sign that he's at least going to make the team. And the Dolphins have a very tough decision to make when it comes to running back because they have Gaskin, Dokes, Malcolm, and Laird. And obviously Scarlett, who I don't think is definitely not making the team. But Laird, uh, he played, you know, he plays well in that spread, uh, fast-paced offense. He plays really well. And he has the last few years here, the last two years, really. So he's a very, he, I like him as a receiving back. He's, he's a, again, in that spread, draw, inside zone type of offense, him running the ball in that kind of, uh, and especially with all the speed that we have at, at receiver, that spread could be very deadly. Uh, and him in the, coming out of the backfield could be a problem for a lot of defenses. So it's going to be a tough decision for them to, to, to kind of figure out, like, hey, what do we do? And Because c- Gaskin can do a lot of things that Lair does, and he's pretty – he's obviously uh, – in, ter- in terms of that spread stuff. And I think Achman can do it to a certain extent, but Laird is pretty good at it, so I don't know. I would have I would rather have Laird on my team than Malcolm Brown. I think a lot of Dolphins fans would agree with that. We'll see what they do. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough decision, but Dokes I liked a lot, uh, and uh, he's one of those standouts. One of the other standouts on offense was Hunter Long in this game. You know I know he had the one drop, but he looked good in the run game. Uh, he was good in the passing game. 
and he just kind of looked the part to me. I, I really liked how the way he looked. I thought he looked really nice uh, in this game. Bright future for him, and obviously the injury to Shaheen. Uh, he should be able to step up and fill those shoes really, really nicely. And Durham Smythe definitely, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him in the future because Hunter Long is a pretty, just really nice all-around tight end. Uh, and he's going to be very, I think he's going to have a big year this year. And uh, he kind of showed why he has a bright future in this game, uh, in this particular game. Another offensive play that really stood out to me was uh, Merritt, Kirk uh, Merritt or Merritt, I can't remember his name. You, got, uh, you guys should know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, he had, uh, is his first name Kirk? It doesn't matter. Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. He had a fantastic game in this game. He's had a fantastic preseason, big physical receiver with some juice. You know, he kind of showed that, that off in this game. Obviously one on a go route, one on a lot of routes. Physical, he had, you know, had that nice... Uh, play where he almost carried a bunch of Bengals into the end zone. Uh, I like him. Um, he was missed on a couple throws too, where Senate kind of just threw it a little bit too hard um, and uh, was just kind of a uh, bad pace, just too much pace on the ball. But uh, I like him. I think uh, he's, he he just, uh, I don't know, I like him. We'll see. The, I, I doubt he'll make the team. There's too many receivers. Unless the Dolphins trade some or do whatever they need to do. But it would be nice to at least keep him on the practice squad. Obviously, Reed uh, Sinnott, who had a fantastic game, had passed for more yards than any other quarterback in the preseason um, and ripped it up. I thought he had a fantastic game. You know, the thing that I don't like, let's, let's start there. He, he had, like, you hear a lot of the time the term changing your delivery or having a variety of different like, change up throws. He throws out the fastball all the time, and it costs him a couple times in this game where it's like, dude, just take some off the ball. You know, there was a slant where he should have hit it, and it just flew in the air, and it's like, okay, let's calm down on this. It's a little too much. Uh, and his pocket awareness is all over the place. You know, he had a nice, obviously the last play is a great example of that, of him able, being able to make people miss, but there was a couple other times it's like, let's step up into the pocket, you know. Let's not drop our head and uh, take a sack right there. You could have gotten rid of the ball. You didn't have to take that sack. So some of the pocket stuff wasn't great, but uh, for the most part, it was pretty dang good. I mean, the man almost passed for 400 yards, so I shouldn't be hating that much, but he definitely, you know, he's not better than Jacoby. That's for sure. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. He's had a nice development, though. And he's been with the team for two years. He's trending in the right direction, so I would at least think that they would keep him around. Um, we'll see what they do with them. I like him. Um, I think, you know, he, th the positives were his accuracy was really good in this game. You know, despite some of the, the you know, he had one bad moment, obviously, on the pick. Uh, but other than that, like, uh, his accuracy was fantastic. Um, you know, he made the right reads. He made quick decisions. Uh, you know, he, he has a, what seems to be a strong arm. Now, we've heard different things from other people around the Dolphins, I guess. But uh, in that game, I was like, yeah, he can throw pretty good. Um, so, yeah, there, there was a lot to like in that game. You know, he obviously does have some athleticism um, uh, as he showcased in this game. But I think the thing that I liked the most was his, just, his accuracy on all three levels of the field was pretty dang consistent when it comes to intermediate, short, deep. You know, he had... I mean, even the last throw was a perfect example of just accuracy. A lot of quarterbacks would just sail that out of bounds or out of the back of the end zone. That was a perfect throw on the run. So his accuracy is the thing that I think that impressed me the most about him. Uh, and we'll see what the Dolphins end up doing. Defensively, offensively, you know, pretty much the entire, just final thoughts on offense before we move on. Um, I can't think of, I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting someone because we scored a ton of points, but... Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anybody. I, I think the offensive line had a really good game as a unit. That I, uh, you know, I think one of our who was the tackle? He gave up two sacks in this game. Uh, who was that tackle? I can't remember right now. I'm sorry, guys. It's late. But other than that, I thought that we were able to kind of really get some movement up front. That that it matters. All these guys are pretty are backups, so you know it's not. I, I just thought they had a good game. Uh, against the Bengals backups but anyway other than that there's not really much to talk about uh as for individually oh Malcolm Perry Malcolm Perry had a really nice game too uh and it kind of says a lot that he was out there playing he's played with every string of like backup starters he's played a lot in this preseason so it kind of makes me think that, like they're kind of on the fence on him hopefully not I, I liked he ran a lot of 
big boy routes in this game that NFL receivers and routes that you really didn't expect Malcolm Perry to run as well as he did. And I thought he had nice hands in this game, which has been the knock on him. Obviously, he had that night he had that drop against the Falcons. Like he doesn't have the strongest hands in the world, but uh, he had really he made some tough catches in this game, and I thought he did a nice job in this game as well. I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Hopefully, I'm not. So let's go on to the defensive side of the ball. It wasn't a great day for defense. Um, there wasn't really anybody that st- necessarily stood out to me. Uh, the one that stood out to me was Igbenogany. I thought he had a pretty pretty good... I don't know if I would say good. He, he let up a few throws, but he looked... I think really just to see, just commentary on Igbenogany in general, this entire preseason has looked better. Um I think. I think he's looked a lot better than he did a year ago. He's more physical. He just looks the part. He feels like feel like he moves better. Um, so he's had a better... He, he's definitely trending in the right direction. He's been a nice special teamer so far this preseason. And hopefully this that last play where he had the nice fourth down breakup and a very clutch situation. You know, he's man-to-man. You know, the guy's going across the field, which he struggled a lot last year on. And granted, a couple of those were against Stephon Diggs. Uh, and Cole Beasley, which are veteran route runners. Um, uh, so you can kind of cut the rookie some slack in man-to-man coverage, but you know that that's one of the plays that he consistently got beat on last year, and, he, and it was nice to see him you know, break a pass up in that moment on a play that he has gotten beat on before. So it was nice to see that. Hopefully he gets his confidence up, but that was it really from the last preseason game. There wasn't a lot on defense that I was impressed by. Um, you know, Perry, he had, a, he had an okay game. Uh, other than that, it was pretty average, I would say. You know, anytime we played cover three, it it, it was it was a mess. It was a lot of missed assignments. Um. Yeah. Other than that, that's it. So let's get into the fan Q and A, ladies and gentlemen, where we get into fan questions. I'm trying to be a little bit quieter because people are asleep. Uh, and we have some people. We have people a, per, a person over that's. Uh, not used to being here, so I'm trying to be, keep it quiet. Uh, I don't want to be rude. Um, well, by the way, that was the weirdest way I could ever describe that. I don't know why I described it that way. I, I really don't. But anyway, uh, let's get into the fan QA. I, I think a lot of people are going to be upset. First of all, I'm sorry about the uploads, by the way, too. A lot of stuff has happened, okay? Uh, we've had a we've had a guest over the last few weeks. I just gotta. It's my fault. Uh, it's just um, I don't know something about being nervous recording and people hearing you record. I don't know. Maybe it had. I don't know why I was. Um, but uh, yeah. But anyway, like I said in the last episode, I am trying to to get back on a better schedule and uh, upload new content and stuff of that nature. And the streaming thing, I'm still looking into and figuring it all out and trying to get it set up. Um, so let's get to the fan unit. I think a lot of people are going to be upset that I use this as a th- I don't care. It, it, I thought it was interesting. I thought you guys should know about it. So that's why I did it. Anyway, this is this, next, this first question comes from Robert. He says, uh, excuse me, let me start over. This first question comes from Robert. Uh, again, we're getting to the fan Q&A where we answer Dolphins fans' questions. Don't know I have to say that every time, but I do. Uh, so he says, he asks, when a player is put on the practice squad, can another team claim him or is he safe? And can we bring him during, uh, back during the season? Thanks again for what, for what you do. I thank you, Robert. Um, yes, they can take them from the practice squad. So he's not necessarily safe. Um, teams, as far as I understand, can still offer, uh, contracts to other people, that are on different practice squads, I believe. I'm not too familiar with it, but I, I'm pretty sure they can. Um, and yes, you can. They can come back pretty much at any time from the practice squad. Thank your question, Robert, and thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. This next question goes from Mark. He says, "So I know you've heard the rumors. Hard to pass up a talent like Watson, but I think Tua is the guy in my eyes. Do you agree? Oh, and should we keep Sinnott over Brissett? Dude was balling out. Uh, no, Jacoby's a better player." Uh, but, um, yeah, and, and, you know, one thing that I forgot to mention with the Watson stuff, and I, I kind of wish I would re-record it, uh, is he is a hard talent to ignore, and one aspect that I didn't really talk about, Mark, excuse me, sorry, 
is Tua is playing well and he is developing. This is his only this is only his second year. Why would you give up three first round picks? It, it, you would have to be pretty confident. And again, some people have also argued maybe it's not it's not the Tua thing. Maybe it has nothing to do with Tua. It's just Deshaun Watson is such a great talent. So I could get that and I could understand that. But at the same time, you're giving up three first round picks. Um, so Tua has to factor in a little bit because you have to think about that. We could just keep Tua and keep all our picks and continue to build around him. And he's 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 developed. And he can develop into a superstar. So, and he's trending in that direction. So, I don't understand that. That's what makes it so weird. Is the thing that I was talking about earlier was like, it seemed like everything was trending in the right direction. I don't know. It is odd, but you do make a great point. You you really can't pass up a player like a twenty five year old who's a top five at his position that is twenty five. It's and it plays the most important position on the field. So yeah. It's hard to pass, pass up. It's a good, it's a good question, though, Mark. Uh, this next question comes from SM. He says, "Does Chris uh, Merrick or Myrick? I heard someone say Myrick, and I d- it's not spelled that way. I think it is spelled that way. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Merrick. He says, "Will he make the team?" I was surprised last year when he didn't make the cut, and now uh, we have even more depth at tight end. <sighs> Probably not, if I had to guess. But that catch does help things. But if I had to guess, SM, no. I mean, Hunter Long, Durham Smythe, all of those guys, Adam Shaheen. Um, uh, Mike Gesicki, uh, I already said Durham, you know, they're all kind of ahead of him, and, uh, that's, what, four tight ends, so I don't know, I don't know about keeping five. So this question goes from Bobby, he says, keep up the good work, your content is awesome. My question is, which player do you expect not making the final roster? That may come as a shock to Finns fans. Well, it just happened, Bernardrick McKinney. That, that's it, that's a, that blew me away. I could not believe it, I still can't believe it. Um, it, you know, it is very surprising. Uh, the sixth question goes for Beef. He says, Hey, Skags, I was late trying to post this question last week. Seeing Justin Fields getting... Uh, and again, that's a, that's a good question by uh, Bobby, by the way. Thank you for saying keep up the good work. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's move on. Sorry, sorry, Bobby. Any, sorry, Beef. In the middle of the question, just kind of went off. But yeah, thank you, Bobby, for saying that. Anyway, this question goes for Beef. Let's re- rehash it. My mind is going in 50 different places. He says, Hey, Skags, I was late trying to post this question last week. Seeing Justin Fields getting... Uh, hit that high for the Bills last week does concern me when we face them. I got a feeling that that could have been Tua. Did you think that hit was legal? And did you think the Bills are already starting to get pretty cocky already about the season? Also, what is it about Bills fans that you hate? Just saying. What is it that I hate about Bills fans? I just hate Bills anything. Anytime I see Bills anything. Dude, the last 10 years playing the Bills has not been fun. I don't even want to bring up the record, but you all know what I'm talking about. It just hasn't, the Tyrod Taylor era, even before that, I mean, Kyle Orton, I think, beat us once. Or no, I, no, I think t- someone, I think Tyrod had taken over at the point. I don't remember it. The point is, it hasn't been fun playing them the last 10 years. So, yes, if I see those colors of that stupid logo, it, it makes me mad. Um, um, yeah, and I didn't see the hit. I don't. I, I. I. I would have to go and look at it. Sorry, uh, but I. I wouldn't worry about it. I. I. It. You know, hits like that happen sometimes. I don't think the Bills are dirty or, or they'll they'll be doing stuff like that to other players. I think. I think. I think you're okay. Uh, this is question comes from Beef. He says, "Hey Skags, this is backwards. So this is to his second season, but his first preseason. How do you think?" This will benefit Tua going into the season. I think it will. It benefits any player. I mean, even Tom Brady in his old age does it. He he had two touchdown drives against the. Uh, uh, it was the the. Uh, I don't even remember. It was. I think it was the Texans. I don't remember. Uh, in preseason, he's played a, a few snaps. I mean, Patrick Mahomes has played a ton of snaps in preseason. So it it, it definitely anything that you can do to practice and and, and warm yourself up and. Uh, it helps and uh, so yeah, it helps in that regard for sure. I mean, even old like I said. Uh, even older players do it to uh, to prepare themselves for the season. This next question comes from Steve. He says, We have good depth at receiver, but if history repeats itself, the wide receiver group, as in years past, is going to lose a few key players. If this happens again this year, how confident are you in team success with guys like Hollins, Merritt, Grant having to fill uh, those starting roles? I'm very confident. Now, Grant is another story. I like how we've u- utilized him, though, this year. I think I think that's how you're supposed to use him in the slot, you know, crossing, you know, using his speed to his advantage by crossing him from one side of the field to the other. Things like that uh, I think is going to help him a lot. 
um, and, you know, throwing on bubble screens, you know, getting him in the open field, I think is going to help Grant's game. Um, and uh, Hollins and uh, 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 Merritt Kirkman, I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm probably not, but, you know, I've, I loved his preseason. I love Holland's preseason. Him and Tua have a really nice uh, r- rapport. A lot of people around the league, or not around the league, but around the team have suggested that he should switch to tight end. That would be an awesome, awesome thing if the Dolphins did that to get him on the field more because him and Tua have a great connection. You know, he's a really nice athlete. He's got pretty good hands. I wouldn't say great. You know, he's had, some, he's had a couple moments, uh, but uh, he's a nice blocker, very physical uh, I think he could actually play tight end and be a very good one, but um, it's just so that's something to keep your eye on. But yeah, I like those guys. I think they're good. I, I think I have a, a decent amount of confidence. Uh, this next question comes from SM. He says uh, this GM loves to trade players instead of to cut to cut them. Does any of our players have trade value? Preston Williams, perhaps. No, I don't think you're going to get anything for Preston Williams, um, and I really don't see anything anybody else getting traded necessarily. This next question comes from KC Fanatic. He says, Dokes and Laird uh, make the cut. We carry four running backs with Ahmed Gaskin. Your thoughts? I like that. I know that. I, I really do. I think those players are worthy of making the team. And, you know, that's something that I just talked about earlier when watching the Bengals game. But Malcolm Brown needs to be let go, man. He isn't better than any of those guys. This next question comes from Tony. He says, Did you see Coach Flo's press conference? Uh, after the game and why and what did you think uh excuse me let me let me rephrase uh this question comes from tony he says did you see flo's press conference yes and what why do you think he didn't put the watson rumors to rest (sighs) that's a tough question because because brian answers questions like that a lot uh and he just and people's like you know he didn't want to be a liar he just said matt skura was a good player and cut him the next day So, I don't really... Brian's vague, dude. Very vague. So, I don't know what to make of it. I don't think it really means anything, to be honest with you. So, I I would just say... I would just chalk it up to Brian being vague, uh, in my opinion. And why didn't he put the rumors to rest? Honestly, to answer your question, Tony, he just... Like I said... Maybe there's some truth to it. I don't know. Maybe there is something going on with the with the Texans and the Dolphins, but uh, um, I don't know. It was weird. I think we all think it. I, I think we can all agree it was weird. But that's just how Brian is. I don't know whether to track that up to Brian being Brian or or I'm not really sure. Uh, this next question comes from Jag Pack. Uh, he says Igbenogany is looking real sus after the game. Is it too soon to admit that? They shouldn't have. They shouldn't have drafted him and used that draft pick to trade up to get a better lineman than Austin Jackson. I disagree with the whole Austin Jackson rip, uh, Jack Pack. I like Austin Jackson. I think he's going to be uh, uh, at least a very good pass protector for his career. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think Igbenogany. You know, he had a couple bad plays there, but uh, you know, he, I think he's actually looked better, and I think he is going to be better, which surprises me, to be honest with you. Um, this, this this next question comes from the gamer. He says thoughts on how Greg Little played. I would have to go back and watch the game. Um, I've only seen it once, so I can't really comment on that too much. This next question comes from the gamer again. He says thoughts on Doke's performance. Uh, I thought he played awesome. I thought he earned a roster spot for sure, and playing time. This next question comes from TR three MC. He says, "Being that all the different reports are surfacing now, is it all is it at all possible that Miami is still interested in getting Watson? And at this point, would he would it be worth it? I think in the long term, and again, let's just say in a perfect world, and it's not even really a perfect world. It's pretty fe- it's pretty reasonable that things. W- I shouldn't say that. I mean, what if I don't know, man." Off the off-the-field issues just make this thing so much more complicated than it needs to be. I mean, I don't know if Deshaun did those things. I, I I don't know. I don't I don't know. I think the best thing I can say to you guys is I'm ignorant to that situation. Uh, you know, I don't know the law as as much as you know some of the lawyers do on ESPN and things that they talk about. Listen to those guys. I'm just here to talk about football. Uh, but when it when it comes to football, yes, I mean he's a fantastic player. He's again I don't know. How, you guys should know this. Deshaun Watson is is great. Like, he is a Hall of Famer. Uh, so, yes, and yes. I mean, we would. I, I think we would be the best team in the AFC East. 
it would be fun as obviously it would be amazing to watch this team win a division title uh and i think they can, they can still do that with the, with Tua uh but I, I, you just kind of guarantee a lot more things with Deshaun Watson as your quarterback you kind of know more like oh yes we for sure would win probably multiple games in the playoffs if he was our quarterback i i know he would at least win one and to have a home playoff game as a Dolphins fan is, is a dream. So all of those things are awesome. So when you talk about Deshaun Watson being Dolphin, all of those things become reality and guaranteed reality, not kind of like, oh, this could happen. No, that's a guarantee. Like, this team is that good. Um, and I think, again, those things can still be achieved with Tua. I'm not saying they can't. But like I said, things become guaranteed with Deshaun Watson. Um, this next question comes from Richard. He says, I hope uh, uh, Kirk makes the team uh, and Kirk Merritt and Malcolm Perry make the roster. Uh, Merritt reminds me of Mark Clayton. Ooh, interesting. Perry reminds me of Wes Welker. I, I could see why you would say that about Perry. Uh, you heard it here. If Cut Bill Belichick will grab one of those. I think he definitely would get Perry because he's a Navy guy and you know he's a smaller slot type of a receiver. But yeah, I don't know about uh, him being Clayton with Kirk. I think Clayton had... A little bit more juice, you know. Merritt's a little bit more physical, a little bit bigger. At least he seen he might not be, but he seems he, that's how he kind of plays. Um, so yeah, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry I had to cut the fan Q and A a little short. I'm trying to be as quiet as possible, and it's hard to be quiet when we're talking about Deshaun Watson and the Dolphins and uh, Tua and all of those things that might happen, but. Uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's it. I think we answered every individual's question. A lot of questions. Thank you guys for all the questions. Almost 30 questions. Uh, and again, like I said, we're definitely going to try to get the channel back on track and ready to go. Uh, so that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.